Well, vitamin K2 is often promoted for heart health. It has many other benefits. This includes brain health. So you can not only keep your heart lubricated and pumping, but you can keep your thoughts flowing freely and smoothly as well. It is by will alone I set my mind in motion. It is by the juice of sapu that thoughts acquire speed. The lips acquire stains. The stains become a warning. It is by will alone I set my mind in motion. Smithers, massage my brain. I just wanted to say thank you again to everyone who supports the channel and watches and likes every video and comments regularly. If people don't watch at that early stage and give it a thumbs up, the video just dies out and I can see them just stop recommending the video to anybody. It just kind of turns off like a light switch. So I really appreciate you guys. That's really the only thing that keeps the channel going. And sometimes it's the only thing that keeps me going too because in case you don't realize it, this really doesn't pay very much money at all. I also want to thank the paying members who've joined the channel. And that's really overwhelming that people would ever do that at all. And it's a lot of support for such a small channel. And it really couldn't happen at a better time for me. And it also really makes me wonder about all the really big channels without all that many comments on their videos. But they have hundreds of thousands of views. But anyway, back to K2, my father has neuropathy issues and he has been taking some supplements and doing a lot better. He has barely been using his cane at all lately and this is a huge turnaround for him because he could barely walk before. I thought he was simply frail but actually it was neuropathy all along. So I've been looking into neuropathy more so he can get further relief. And I was surprised to see that vitamin K2 is more important for your nerve and brain health than I'd realized. Apparently, K2 is required for the body to produce sphingolipids. I had heard this term before, but back in the day, these sphingolipids were assumed not to have any actual function in the body. This turns out to be incorrect. In fact, sphingolipids, which are named after the sphinx, because they were considered very mysterious at the time, are very important. We now know that sphingolipids are required for stable cell membranes, especially in neurons, and they're also responsible for keeping blood vessels elastic. Like EPA and DHA and C15 fatty acids, it's very important we have enough sphingolipids, or we simply cannot build or maintain the myelin sheath that protects neurons and speeds up their ability to communicate. Well, you can get these other important lipids directly through the diet, and that's probably the best way to get them from animal products, basically. You need vitamin K2 to create and maintain sphingolipids within the myelin sheath and cell membranes of neurons and nerves. In fact, the antibodies that cause problems in MS are antibodies against sphingolipids and this actually directly destroys the myelin sheath and all of this time I had no idea that was the case I've always known about those antibodies but nobody specifically said what they're attacking and without the myelin sheath these cells are much more vulnerable to damage and that is the heart of both neuropathy and dementia so K2 is very important if you want your loved ones to stay physically and mentally healthy. Where is that elderly old man? Old man? Old man? Ah! Hey, look, a freezer man. There's an endless volume of studies on vitamin K2 for a surprising number of health issues. This includes many mechanisms important for fighting and preventing cancer, fighting off severe infection without triggering a cytokine storm, and much, much more. This includes GAS-6 and Protein S, both of which depend on K2, and they're needed for phagocytosis. This reduces inflammation in reactive oxygen species and cleans up senescent cells in your body and also prevents their occurrence. 
So this is actually an anti-aging vitamin. You may have heard of the P53 gene, AKA the gene responsible for the Warburg effect or the gene responsible for causing cells to switch into fermentation. This cancer promoting gene is turned off by K2, which is going to have obvious health benefits. K2 prevents apoptosis in healthy cells by a variety of mechanisms, especially in neurons due to the protective effects of the sphingolipids. In short, our immune system tends to become weak and lazy with age, but a little vitamin K2 can perk up your lazy immune cells in no time. Watch this. Not bad. Oh, it's pretty good yeast. This isn't bad. This is pretty good. Blood supply is obviously critical in the whole body, but even more so in the brain, which consumes large amounts of oxygen, full of huge amounts of mitochondria, even small amounts of hypoxia and neurons, is going to lead to degeneration of lots and lots of reactive oxygen species over time. And this leads to inflammation, it leads to mitochondria loss, it leads to cell senescence and ultimately it leads to cell death and your brain actually shrinks. Vascular dementia is less talked about than Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, but like those two, it causes a lot of brain shrinkage. Vascular dementia is directly caused by stiff blood vessels and vitamin K2 can help a great deal with this issue. In fact, heart disease and arteriosclerosis have been characterized in recent years as being symptoms of vitamin K2 deficiency. Considering heart disease is a rather new phenomenon, at least at large scale, and the many benefits of vitamin K2 for blood vessels and the reduced dietary vitamin K2 over time in our diet, this seems like a fair assessment. We should probably also view brain dysfunction in this light as well. The amount of dementia we see also goes up and up every year, even as the average diet becomes more and more deficient in K2. The medical industry does not take notice of deficiency unless it leads directly to death, but it is increasingly clear we should consider dementia as a sign of deficiency. Aside from its effects on blood vessels and the protective effects, of the previously mentioned sphingolipids that K2 produces, K2 has a surprising number of other ways it helps with dementia. This includes reducing reactive oxygen species and removing and preventing amyloid plaque buildup in brain cells, and also reducing apoptosis in neurons, AKA cell death. In transgenic fruit fly experiments, it's shown that fruit flies that have human mitochondrial errors known to lead to Parkinson's, have their mitochondrial dysfunction negated through supplementation of K2. Since this is essentially a human mitochondria implanted into a fruit fly, this should also apply to humans. Interestingly, K2 can be directly used for ATP production by these mitochondria in a manner that produces very little ROS, which I found kind of fascinating actually. So this is actually something that should help a great deal with preventing the damage of aging, whether it's in your skin, your brain, or your kidneys. And methylene blue also has the same kind of effect, by the way. It also has surprising benefits for your liver, which in turn will help protect your kidneys from damage. It should even help with that most delicate of organs, the pancreas. Pancreas. It was Weston A. Price who first theorized the existence of vitamin K2 and he used butter oil full of K2 to reverse cavities and many other diseases. Unfortunately, only cows that eat fresh grass are going to have enough K2 in their milk and cheese to be useful and the longer it sits around, the more it's going to degrade. So really, if you're not drinking raw pasture-raised milk, then you're probably not getting nearly as much vitamin K2 as you should be getting. And there's another problem with the high heat, 
pasteurization, the UHT pasteurization. It's probably going to just completely destroy all of the vitamins. And this also allows it to sit around for months instead of for a couple of weeks. And then that basically guarantees that it's going to be totally degraded. So don't think that these fancy organic milks are the answer because they're almost always high heat UHT pasteurized. And that's also going to cause a lot of autoimmune problems. Heart disease, dementia, even cancer and aging are all impacted by vitamin K2 deficiency. As the level in our modern diet goes down and down and we're getting more and more of these diseases. K2 reduces reactive oxygen species production and negates the effects of mitochondrial DNA errors that lead to Parkinson's in humans. K2 is also needed to create sphingolipids, which are necessary for creating and maintaining the protective myelin sheath and creating stable cell membranes and neurons and other cells. MS antibodies actually attack these sphingolipids so it's doubly important for MS patients to get plenty of K2 along with plenty of vitamin D. K2 is pushed down by warfarin and other similar medications, but unfortunately the reverse can hold true as well. So people on these meds may need to talk to a doctor about taking K2 or they may need to dose it intermittently to get the benefits without reversing the effects of warfarin. I take one teaspoon of the K2 powder in the links once per month. You could also do it weekly, but doing so daily is going to require capsules because the dosage is just extremely tiny. You're not really going to be able to measure that out by hand. Keep in mind, only a small amount of the powder provides many times the international units in a single milligram. Don't Confuse these numbers with milligrams or you'll take way too much. Thankfully, there seems to be no issues with large doses of K2, even if you take it very high. But this probably doesn't hold true in all cases, in all doses. It amazes me how nutrition has such a huge impact on our health. Especially animal nutrition, which is full of vitamins and endless other micronutrients simply not found in plants. Unfortunately, the powers that be don't want us to eat animal products such as dairy. And definitely not the actual cow. They only want us to eat cow patties. Well, it's not a clean yeast. Tits ripe and delicious, though.